Hi, I've been doing a lot of soldering recently with the Metcal GT120 soldering station. This is the adjustable temperature station, unlike the rest of Metcal's range, which is fixed temperature, depending on which cartridge that you put in it. Uh, this works like a normal soldering station where you can adjust the temperature on it, and I've been using it quite a lot recently. I really like the handpiece on this, but what I've noticed is when I'm doing prolonged soldering of surface mount components, uh, this large handpiece can get a little bit unwieldy. It's quite a large handpiece, and in the past when I've been using the MX5200 station, which has a similarly sized handpiece with it, uh, I've tended to swap for the ultra-fine handpiece for prolonged surface mount soldering. You can see this one's quite a lot shorter, uh, and this makes surface mount soldering really nice and low effort because it's so lightweight and it's really quite small. Um, so I looked into it. Uh, the GT120, as we saw in the review video, is designed to deliver a lot of power into the joint. This is a 120 watt station, so consequently it has quite a large hand piece to handle the cartridges that can deliver that kind of power. Now they also do another version of this adjustable station, the GT90, which is a 90 watt station, and that has a slightly smaller handpiece, the GT4 handpiece instead of this GT6. Um, so Metcal very kindly sent me the GT4 handpiece to try out. It turns out the GT120 is backwards compatible with the GT4 handpiece, uh, so we can actually use this station quite happily with both of these. Now I happen to have two of these GT120 stations, so I'm going to dedicate one to the GT4 and one to the GT6, which makes sense. But as you can see, it's quite a lot shorter um, and it compares quite favourably with the ultra-fine handpiece of the MX5200, so very similar in overall body length, although the strain relief on this one is a little bit longer. So today we're going to have a look at this. Uh, we're going to upgrade the firmware on this station. Uh, this is the one that I've had sat aside for a while because I've been using the other station. Uh, so we'll upgrade the firmware and then we'll test out this handpiece with a bit of soldering today. So at the moment we're running quite an old version of the firmware. This is version 83 and the one on the website is version 96. So I've put it on an old USB stick. And we plug that in and we press the outer two buttons and power it up. We count to three and then release. And after about 10 or 15 seconds, it's supposed to boot up with the new version of the firmware. And it briefly said version 96, and now we've got this white screen. And in the upgrade instructions, it did say that after upgrading the firmware, you may end up with the screen with a very high contrast. And you can see that's what's happened here. So what it says is we have to reset the EEPROM. So we turn it off again, hold down the up and down, and then we turn it on. Now it looks like this may not work if we don't have a handpiece connected, because as you can see, it's saying cartridge open instead of going through to the menu. So let's try um, plugging in a handpiece. Right, so I plugged in the GT6 handpiece and we'll try and do the same thing again. So uh, we'll turn it on while pressing the up and down. And there we go. You can just about see that it says confirm EEPROM reset. So we press these two buttons together and that's reset it. Now that hasn't actually um, restored the contrast, so we need to go to the menu, uh, system, down to brightness I think, and then across to contrast, and I think 50 was a decent setting previously. And there we go, so we're back to normal. Right, so let's take a look at the new handpiece. Now the GT4 handpiece is very similar to its larger counterpart, the GT6. The main difference being that this part of the body is quite a bit smaller. So it's got exactly the same grip and you can incidentally buy these as spare parts now. Um, so these can be removed and replaced if you do wear them out. Uh, it's got exactly the same cord grip, exactly the same cable. Obviously it's got exactly the same DIN connector on the end. Uh, the main difference being just that this part of the handpiece is smaller. And in the catalogue, there are two options for your soldering tips. So the default option is basically a heater cartridge that you insert into here. And then you can buy 
various different tips at a very low price and you slide these over and then you put the collet over the top and screw it into the handpiece and you can just quickly swap these over and that's a very low budget setup. The other option is a fully integrated cartridge and this has the heater, the, the temperature sensor and obviously the tip all built into it. The difference being the cost of these is probably about three or four times higher than each of these tips and unfortunately at the moment the fully integrated cartridge isn't available for the GT4 so we have to stick with the default option uh, which is one of these heaters and I've also got a variety of tips to try out. These are quite a bit smaller uh, even though they've got similar tip geometries they just can't quite deliver as much power into the joint so let's have a closer look at one of these. So we've got here probably my most used soldering tip for general SMD soldering. This is a one millimeter chisel tip. So we'll put the heater into the handpiece, just push it until it bottoms out, put the tip over the heater, and then we use the metal collet here. And we screw that in place and that holds the tip nice and firmly against the heater. And we end up with quite a compact soldering iron here and in comparison to some of the other stations um, obviously compared to the MX5200 Ultra Fine we've got quite a difference here between the grip and the tip hopefully if they produce the cartridges for this state for this handpiece then uh, we'll be much closer to this kind of distance here but we compare it to something like the JBC uh, you can see where you hold onto it is pretty similar and you can see there's quite a difference in the overall length. So this is quite a compact handpiece, you just have to deal with that slightly longer um, tip to grip distance compared to uh, with the MX5200 system. Now incidentally the GT4 handpiece does fit in exactly the same cradle as the GT6 so that fits in there quite nicely. And rather than any kind of sensor in here, this has one of those accelerometer type arrangements. So once it detects that you're not soldering anymore, then it starts the timer on the station to work out when to put it into any kind of hibernation or sleep mode. So to do our soldering today, we're going to be using some new PCBs that I've had made using JLC PCBs SMD assembly service. So this is a new version of my AC dimmer PCB. In the previous version, we had a pair of MOSFETs which are allowing our DC PWM signal to control an AC waveform. And after repairing that very light dimmer a couple of months ago, I thought we'd try out their slightly different arrangement, which used an IGBT and a bridge rectifier to allow our DC signal to control the AC waveform. And we'll go into a bit more detail on all of this in the next video, where we actually connect all this up, look at the waveforms on the Pico scope, and actually try these out properly. Today what we're going to be doing is assembling the components that I wasn't able to get assembled using JLC PCB's assembly service. But if you are thinking about getting some boards made, don't forget to visit JLC PCB. And I think they use, by default, a lead-based soldering process. So we're going to continue that on for all of these other parts that we've got to solder in. And we're going to be using uh, some Solder King solder here. This is a new reel that I've got um, from Solder King. This is a basic 6040 alloy. Uh, but don't forget to visit Solder King's website if you do want to support a UK company making really high quality solder wire. So before we do any soldering we'll quickly have a look at the calibration of this particular handle. So we'll turn on the GT90 and you can see that's detected the T4 handpiece now that we're using the different one here. The temperature is set to 350 degrees C. Let's let that stabilise for a moment. We'll give the tip a quick tin this is the first time using it and I've used deionized water on the sponge that will help prevent any contamination of the tip. So I think that's stabilized let's have a look at what it looks like here. So it's reading 350 on the display And it looks like we're about sort of seven, eight, maybe nine degrees off just using the default calibration, which is actually well within the spec. So no problems there. First of all, we've got a transorb type device to protect the IGBT on each of these PCBs.
Next we're soldering in these three resistors and the pad size is larger so I've increased the size of the tip. So let's try and solder these. Next we've got the DC to DC converter and the bridge rectifier to solder up. Now one thing that I'm noticing already with this handpiece, or at least the series of tips with the heater, is that the tips are a little bit tricky to change while the iron is still quite hot. But they give you this um, silicone pad to take the tip off, which you can do you know, with no problem. But then you've got a situation where you've got this hot tip and you can't actually place it into the holes in the stand uh, very easily at all. Like You can kind of drop it in upside down, but really you don't want to be bashing the tip and uh, if you tin the tip as well, you don't want to be splashing solder into here. So what I've actually ended up doing is I've been using a pair of tweezers that came with uh, the Ursa solder guy. And this grabs the tip quite nicely, which has the Ursa has a similar system. Uh, and then you can very easily uh, just place this into the hole without any trouble. So given that this type of system is what they've gone with, really they should provide some tweezers a bit like this with the kit. Uh, like Ursa do I think and it would make it a lot easier to use. The suppression capacitor is up next. Next is the IGBT. Then we've got the Verista to put in. To solder something like the pin headers, what you can do is this is the main board that the PCBs are designed to sit in. So we're actually going to plug these into the PCB sockets that are already on the board. And then simply put the PCBs in place.
Finally, we've got the terminal block for the AC connections. So that's the PCB assembled and I think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to clean this up in the ultrasonic bath and then in the next video we can start connecting this up to the picoscope, connecting it up to some lights and plug it in and see what the waveforms look like and see how this new arrangement of the IGBT and bridge rectifier work instead of the dual MOSFET arrangement that I had for my LED dimmers before. Now in terms of the soldering, as you saw the T4 still handled all of the joints effortlessly, even the larger ones. The bridge rectifier actually has a surprising amount of thermal mass and with the correct size tip it had absolutely no problem flowing the solder into there. Um, however, I did make sure that I changed the tip for the appropriate size joint that I was doing and that did mean I had to swap out the tip several times during the soldering session and with the silicone pad that comes with it that is, as you saw, quite tricky to do with these little soldering tips. If we had the cartridges available that you just pulled the entire thing out and stuck in there, you'd be able to easily do that with the silicone pad. But really you need to use another tool to handle these safely. And if you were to just use some basic tweezers or maybe even some pliers if you're gentle, because they're flat, the tendency would be for the tip to suddenly ping off somewhere at 300 degrees C or more. So that would be quite dangerous. So I really think Metcal should deliver something like this with the soldering station so that you can easily and safely swap out the tips because really that's the only flaw with this station. Other than that, the new slightly smaller handpiece, uh, it's not really new, the, the T4 as opposed to the T6 that I've been using is really really lightweight, really compact and pretty effortless to use so uh, you know this works really quite nicely. It's just a shame that it does have that slight difficulty with changing the tips out. Uh, also, as you saw, the Solder King solder, absolutely flawless as well with its application. I did use a couple of other reels. I've got uh, some 0 0.5 which helped with the smaller surface mount parts, but it's exactly the same stuff and no problems there. So if you're thinking about supporting one of the UK solder providers, don't forget to look at the Solder King website and inquire with them and they'll be able to sort you out um, some solder. So a big thank you to Metcal for sending through the T4 handpiece and some of these tips. Uh, don't forget to visit JLC PCB as well if you're thinking about getting some boards assembled. And also, don't forget to visit Solder King if you're thinking about buying some solder. Uh, any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.